Okay, this next lecture is going to talk about declaration of variables, assignment, evaluation, and return types of methods. And this might be the longest lecture, so uh, but it's also the most important one, so bear with me. All right, let's go ahead and write, dive right in. Declaration, assignment, and a confusing shorthand. So, declaration. What's a declaration? In I, semicolon, is an example of a declaration. What you're doing there is you're telling Java you're going to have an integer called I, which Java didn't already know about, and it's going to be of integer type. An assignment is when you do I equals 5. And what you're doing when you're assigning is you're tell, you tell Java you're going to give the value 5 to the integer I, which Java already knew about from the declaration. And the confusing shorthand is that, uh, that statement right there that we use all the time and we take for granted. But I can, I can see how it is confusing. And, and this statement, in I equals 5, is a shorthand. It's a m what you're doing there is you're merging the other two statements. So let me get on my board here. And so you have these two statements, int i and int er i equals 5, right? So these are two statements. When you do int i equals 5, what you're really doing is you're invoking these two statements together. So this statement is right here and then the equals 5 is this statement. So this notation this notation of int i equals 5 is a shorthand for both of these things at the same time. Alright? So if you don't want to do both of those things at the same time you cannot invoke this in i equals 5 shorthand. Okay? And what do I mean by that? If you have a... Um, let me see. Let me start over. So if you have int i equals 0, you know, and later on you want to set i to 10, what you've done here, you declared i and you set it to 0. So you have those two statements there. Later on, you just want to set i to 10. You don't want to declare it again, so it, l later on you want to set i to 10. And this is a mistake I see students make all the time. So you do in i equals 10 later on, right? That's wrong. Why is it wrong? Because what this is, is int i and i equals 10. What that statement, what this statement right here is doing is that stuff. It's doing those two statements. And if you look at these two statements, you, this one, ca this one is a mistake. This one cannot run because this previous statement here had already done int i, so it had already declared um, i to. J it had already told Java about i that i was going to exist and was going to be an int, and then i equals zero, right? So since we have this already done, we can't come down here and do it again. We cannot do this. This is dumb you can't do this okay so if you already did in i equals zero up there you want to change the value of i you do not do this okay you do if you want to change the value of i if you did int i equals whatever let's say six this time and you want to change the value of i later on you do i equals ten or whatever value you want to give it okay you cannot say int i again you cannot say int i again because you already declared it and the in i equals something is a compound statement a sum uh, a, a way to summarize the declaration and the assignment two and one and you don't want to declare something you've already declared okay so back to the lecture um okay now the object version is pretty much the exact same you know declaration you just tell Java, well, if, you, if I say JFrame boobies, you're telling Java you're going to have an object called boobies which Java didn't already know about and it's going to be of JFrame type. And all that's doing, you know, is, is, is creating that variable and assigning a space in memory. Just like the int, it works the exact same way um, and uh, uh, it has the exact same syntax. If you see int i, so it's type and variable name. JFrame boobies, it's type and variable name. Okay? 
exact same syntax. And then we go to assignment. So the, the in, in in assignment, we can have something like boobies equals new J frame. And what that does is invoke the constructor in the J frame class and creates a new J frame object and sets boobies equal to this new J frame object. So boobies is going to be the name of this new J frame object we created. And uh, so in what you're doing is telling Java to create a new J frame that's going to be the value of the boobies object which Java already knew about from the declaration. So that's important. You know, when you set boobies equal to new J frame, um, Java already had to know about boobies. Otherwise, it'll give you an error. It'll tell you what the hell is are boobies. I don't know. Never seen them before. And um, this is an in 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 contrast, and this part is important right here. This this statement right here of boobies equals new J frame is in contrast to boobies equal my friend, where my friend was some other J frame previously created. So let's expound a little bit more on that. So if you have uh, um, J frame my friend equals new j frame right so what that now you have my f is an is a j frame object that you created from scratch and um you can go ahead and say j frame boobies okay and then you can set boobies equal to my friend my f and the reason that works is because my friend is of the same type my friend is of the same type j frame as boobies so if you try to set boobies equal to to 5 for example if you try to set instead of this you try to do boobies equal to 5 java will tell you to screw right off cuz Five is an int, and it's not a, a, a J frame type. Okay, so you can't do that. Uh, okay, let's get back to the presentation. And uh, so here comes the shorthand again, right? So we have this useful shorthand. It's a useful shorthand because it saves us typing and it saves us lines of code. So we have this shorthand that we can do where we say J frame boobies equals new J frame. It's declaration and assignment rolled into one. But again. I don't want you to think that every time you have to create an object, uh, every time that you want to assign a value to an object, you have to create a new one, nor that you have to declare it. Okay, so what's going on here? We have J frame boobies equals new J frame. Right? This part is the declaration this part is the assignment so this statement is really two statements and boobies j frame boobies is the first statement and boobies equals new j frame is the second statement okay so do not use this statement up here unless you actually want to invoke both. If boobies already exists and you wanted to set it to something else, if any object, it can be a baseball player, whatever, if any object already exists and you want to set it to something else, you want to change its value to a different object, you don't have to create it again, okay? If Java already knows about an object called base, uh, baseball player called uh, Barry Bonds, for example, a baseball player type, and, uh, and Java already knows about Barry Bonds, and you want to set Barry Bonds equal to a different, you want to set Barry Bonds equal to, uh, I don't know, Babe Ruth, the Babe Ruth object, you do not want to say baseball player Barry Bonds equals Babe Ruth, okay, because you're declaring Barry Bonds again, Java already knew about it, it's going to be an error. It's just like the integer. So we're going to expand more on that right now. So what we l let's look at the two statements that we uh, looked at. I changed i to j for some reason in this one. In j, oh yeah, it's because uh, PowerPoint keeps auto-correcting lowercase i to uppercase uh, i, and I got annoyed by that. So we have these two statements that we've looked at. In, oh no, let me get back up there. Yeah, okay. So these two types of statements that we have looked at. In j equals 5. And then we have J frame Brittany equals new J frame. 
or J frame Spears equals Britney, where we set Spears. Uh, so we have these two. Uh, it, it's a com it's, it's it's a combination of the two statements. J frame Spears equals Britney, and Britney was a new J frame that we created before. So let's look at the first and third statement. Okay, so we have in J equals five. That's type name equals value. Okay, J frame Britney equals Spears. So type is J frame. Britney is a name, and then equals and then value. So they're all working the same way. Type name equals value. What you need to remember is in J equals five, and from that you can extrapolate. You know the the, the creation, the declaration, and assignment of any variable of any type. You just remember the type. Then you remember that you specify the name by yourself and and you're free to specify whatever name that that you like that's why I always specify these silly names because um, you're really free to give variables whatever name you like and in, in textbooks I always see oh J frame frame so even though when you're programming it's more useful to name your variables like that um, because you're, you'll remember that a frame is a uh, is a is a J frame and you might not remember that that boobies is your J frame so when you're programming it's good to do it that way however when you're learning it's not because it feels like you have to name variables a certain way and it's not the case so back to where we were what you need to remember is int j equals five so you remember type the name of the variable equals the value and remember that when you're creating an object if, if it's a new object you just need to use a new keyword and invoke the constructor by that okay all right, so this is the last part of this presentation, and uh, we're going to talk about methods. And what we're going to do is revisit the hello world thing. So we have, uh, uh, by this point in the semester, most of us know how to write public, static, void, main, string, array arguments. And that's, the, that's the, um, the, the declaration of the main method that... And you have to write it that way in order to Java, in order for Java to note that it, it needs to execute that method, right? So let's analyze that bit of code. So we have public static. That's our access level. Let's forget about static for now. You know, I just threw it in there with the access level of public. Um, it's it's a concept that uh, that we will be touching on in in the coming weeks. But let's forget about it for now. This is a lecture for people to catch up. And so we have access level, and then we have void, public static void. Void is a return type, it's meaning that the method, the main method returns nothing. And then we have a string array arguments. Those, uh, I mean, sorry, then we have main, which is the name of the method, and then we have string array arguments, which is the parameters. That's how you declare a method. Access level, return type, name, parameters. That's all you need to remember. And you don't need to remember that. You need, you don't, th the best thing is that you don't need to remember it that way. You can just remember public static void main string array arguments. And when you think about public static void main string array arguments, you think about public static. Okay, that's the access level. Void. Okay, that's the return type. Uh, main. That's the name of the method. String array arguments. That's the parameters in parentheses. Okay, so if I want to declare a method, um, I don't know, get batting average, like in the test, I just say uh, public, because most met in, in the concept of everything we've studied, the vast, vast, vast majority of methods are going to be public, if not all of them. So public, get num at bats, what's it going to return? Oh, it's going to return a batting average. So it's like point three five five. you know, it's a double. So public return type is double what the, what's the name get batting average is the name they're telling me what the name is so get batting average and then the parameters um, do I need parameters no because in, in that particular class already uh, you know the number of bats and the number of hits were already in the um, class so you don't need parameters so you just open and close parentheses and then you open up your brace and then you have your code there and that's all you need to remember uh, when 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 you're asked to write a method or when you want to write a method just remember public static void main string array arguments and that'll tell you what the syntax to use for writing your method um, now there are two kinds of method one with return type and one without return type void means no return type and this is the simplest kind of method and you just imagine the call to the method is being replaced by the block of code within this methods implementation in the class um, let's look at an example of that uh, here so we have this this uh, main class right here we have this class loops that we used in, in, in class one day and we have our main method this is our main method right here right and 
what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna comment all the or actually delete all this stuff I'm gonna delete all this stuff and what I'm gonna do is write a method here uh, so void uh, new or public void uh, um, void method and I need to do static you know just because I'm not actually instantiating the object I need to do static okay and uh, what do I have here what's the error that it's giving me okay okay so we have public static void void method and what's the void method gonna do simply system dot out dot print line and I'm gonna print an X right and I'm gonna do that a uh, few times um, okay and then in here all oh I have a syntax error here forgot my parentheses and in here all I'm gonna do is just call that method void method okay and now if I run this let's see what the output is yay we printed four X's that's it so as you can see basically what happened was that you know it in, in this this main method is what gets executed you know, uh, just just take that for granted for now. The main method is what Java is going to get executed. In the main method, I just called this void method. All that's all I did. One line of code, and when I called that void method, it executed these four lines of code. So basically, that's what you know. W when you're going to write a uh, uh, when you need a method to just compartmentalize some of your code, so you don't have all your code in one long string inside your main method that gets long and confusing. You just do that. You know, you write a method, and write a void method and what that's gonna do is replace your when you call the method you replace that method call by all the lines of code that are inside of it so this you know doing doing what, what I have on the screen right now is perfectly it's exactly equivalent to doing this to not having a void method and simply having these four statements in here right it's the exact equivalent without having the void method so those two things are equivalent and I'm gonna undo all that okay <coughs> next I'm gonna illustrate the I'm gonna get rid of the void method um, actually I'm gonna call this an int and then int method int method and I'm gonna this one's gonna return an int and if it returns an int, it actually has to, you know, if you declare that it returns an int, it actually has to return an int. Uh, and then I write return 5. Okay? So int method is the name of this method. And when I call it, you're going to see that the same exact thing is going to happen. Boom. The, the call to int method, even though it has a return type, it really behaved no different than... Um, than uh, than the void method did. Like the call to end method simply got replaced by all these lines of code, and then at the end it returned five. But I did nothing with that five. That five just sort of got lost in the air. But what the return type allows me to do is do something like this: int five or er, int uh, x equals that. So I can since int method has a return type, in the end int method will evaluate to an integer. That's what that means. So a call to int method evaluates to an integer. It executes a bunch of code but it also evaluates to an integer and Java will know that and then what I do let me let me call this int ret instead and then in the end what I'm gonna do is system dot out dot print ret okay and let's run it now and see how it behaves print line my bad whatever I mean you saw you saw what happened you saw what happened so that's basically what I have um, I have int red and then int method so when I call int method this call to the method gets replaced by all this code 
and it also returns a five right so the return thing what what the return is making what the return is doing is effectively making my method take on that value it evaluates to that int void methods don't do that void methods don't evaluate to int to anything so if we had a, a, a an int let's say int y equals to even though i deleted it void method that would give me an error. You know, even if I still had the void method in there, it would give me an error because a void method does not evaluate to anything. A void method just gets just replaces the method call by the bunch of code that's inside the method and that's it. But a, a, a method with a return type is a little different. It actually evaluates to that integer, so I can use it. I could do um int red equals int method plus int method. And every time I call int method is gonna execute those print lines. So um, now I'm going to have eight X's, and at the end, when I print red, it's going to be 10. Uh, oh, character snuck in there. You see? I have my eight X's, and in the end, I print a 10. And that's all that is. You know, th that's methods and return types in a nutshell for you. Okay? And that is it for today's video. I hope uh, uh, you guys enjoy it and find it constructive. And um, I hope, actually, I don't hope that you enjoy it and find it constructive. I hope that you actually watch it. Because <laughs> if not, I'm wasting my time. All right. Merry Christmas and have a good day.